name is Abigail, but you can call me Abby. And this ride is my full-time home. This is a 1986 Toyota Dolphin. It's a light truck with a camper on top. The Dolphin is 21 feet long, which is the size of a typical cargo van. So it fits in a regular parking space. And even though it's a vintage RV, more than 30 years old, it's got a super reliable Toyota engine and it runs great. The engine is only four cylinders though, so we max out at 60 miles per hour on the highway and you don't want to get stuck behind us going uphill when our speed drops down to a cool 20 miles per hour. We're going everywhere, but we're going slow. <laughs> the cab is like a time capsule for the 80s. <laughs> You're definitely going back in time riding up here, but I don't mind at all. I really think it's pretty cute. My favorite part is the whole girl on the dash. It came with the RV. The passenger seat serves as extra storage. Given that space is limited and this is my full-time home, it just made sense. I've made a few modifications to this RV. Wait until you see the inside. Welcome to my crib. Come on in. I should show you my amazing screen door. It detaches from the other door so that I can enjoy the fresh air and stay bug free. This RV is definitely vintage and appears like that on the outside, but on the inside, it's completely renovated to be a modern, stylish, off-grid tiny house. Right when you walk in at the front of the home, above the cab is a full-size bed where I normally sleep. There's just enough space up here that I can sit up without bumping my head on the ceiling, but it is a little tight and I'm lucky that I am a very short person. <laughs> Above the bed there is an emergency hatch that opens all the way up so I can access the roof if I need to and, I don't know, escape if there's an emergency? <laughs> Below the bed is the cab. I've got a curtain just pinned up here to give me a little privacy. But I can access the front of the cab. Say I just need to make a quick getaway, get out of bed and hop into the driver's seat and get out of somewhere, I can do that. And I really love that about this design. Again, because I'm so short, I have the driver's and the passenger seat scooted all the way forward, which allows me more room for storage of some things behind the seats. I've got a basket with my camp chair, yoga mat, things like that. I have my portable power station and then some baskets of all my shoes and um, where I store my solar panel. It goes right back in there. On this side, I've got my welcome mat and bowl of water for my pup. And with a flash, all of the storage stuff can be kind of hidden with my beautiful tapestry. When you live tiny, making use of every little bit of space is super important. So I've installed hooks everywhere to make space on the walls. I've got hooks up here for my hats, and I've got some hanging baskets here. No matter how much space you have, when things get out of place, it creates a lot of chaos. I like to stay organized and have a place for everything. So having lots of little storage compartments really just brings me so much peace. In these hanging baskets, I've got electrical cords, eyeglasses, sunglasses, and scarves, books, things like that. Behind these baskets is actually my bathroom. I chose this Toyota Dolphin as my tiny home because I love that even though it's 21 foot long and fits in a standard parking space, it offers me so much room inside. A full enclosed bathroom that has everything I need. Flushing toilet, sink, mirror, shower, everything. If you've never seen an RV toilet before, it's super simple. You go and then you flush. It's that easy. This is the shower area. As you can see, it's full of things. I've got my laundry hamper, 
dog food, toiletries, um, extra toilet paper, things like that is all stored in here. I've been living in this particular RV for about six weeks now and I have not used the shower once. There are so many other ways to get a shower when you're living on the road. You can use Planet Fitness, truck stops, friends' houses, occasionally you find like public showers, rivers, lakes, oceans. When you only have so much water on board, you're always trying to conserve it and showers do take quite a bit of water, so they are more of a luxury. I do take showers, just generally not in here. <laughs> Usually if I can find another place to take a shower, I use that, but it's nice to know that if I do need a shower, I can have one in here. Fun fact, before I got this RV, I actually lived in a van for three and a half years. And that van did not have an enclosed bathroom, so I feel like I upgraded. More hanging baskets for storage. Y'all, I love the hanging baskets because there's only so much cabinet, shelf, and floor space in here, so hanging storage is excellent. I've got some makeup and random stuff up here, washcloths and towels perfectly organized. The bathroom also has its own roof vent with fan. Cause you gotta get rid of those smells. And this is the kitchen where I spend a lot of time because well, it's a one room house and also I really love to cook. <laughs> this is my fridge. It runs off of propane, which is pretty cool. And I cook a lot, so I've got a lot of food in here. And this is a really great size. It's a fridge and a freezer and it can store up to two weeks of food for one person or one week of food for two people. I love it. In this cabinet, I have spices, oils, sauces, condiments, things like that. I have a sink with running water, just like a normal house. It's actually a double sink, and I keep this little rack over here to dry my dishes. In this drawer, I've got pens, scissors, stuff like that. In this drawer, batteries, tools, hooks, random stuff like that. <laughs> and then in this drawer, I've got um, jewelry. Underneath the sink, I've got cleaning supplies, mixing bowls, cutting boards, assortment of other things. I also keep my portable cooktop in here as well. And I just pull it out when I need it. Above the sink in these cabinets is food storage, so I keep all of my uh, nuts, seeds, dried fruit, bread, stuff like that up here. In case you're wondering where the water in my sink comes from, I have three tanks mounted underneath the RV. One is fresh, clean water that comes out of the sinks, and then another one is gray water, which is used water, dirty water, that goes from the sink drain down and then I have a black tank which is the toilet. What I really love about the dolphin is it has this nifty gauge here. Because the tanks are mounted underneath the RV, it can be hard to see them. So it has a guide here, fresh gray and black. I press the button and it tells me how full my tank is, which is really great. So I know when I'm running out of fresh water and I need more water for drinking and eating and cleaning. I know when my gray tank is getting full and I need to empty it. So, I love that. On the other side of my kitchen is this beautiful butcher block countertop. I love it. It's so beautiful and it gives me so much room for prep space when I'm cooking my meals. I have a portable cook station that I set up whenever I want to cook. Super easy to set up, just like that. I'm ready to cook. When I park at camp for like a week or something, I usually just leave this set up. I just put it away when I'm driving, so it works for me. Above the counter, there is more storage. On this side, I keep plates, cups, pots and pans, things of that nature. 
And on this side, I have all of my coffee and tea supplies, my kettle, my French press, frother. I have a lot of, I love coffee and tea, so everything. Below the counter, I had this kind of empty space. So I use it for storage. <laughs> got my laptop in there. And then I've got three of these storage cube baskets all full of different stuff. There's lots of storage in there, which is awesome because even though it looks like this might be storage, it leads to nothing. This is another false cabinet. It's very small, but I do have a little bit of room. So I've got things like onions and potatoes stored in here. <laughs> Above that, this is my junk drawer. Just some random junk in there. This has all my utensils for cooking, my squeezer, storage containers, stuff like that. And then up here is utensils for eating and more utensils and things for cooking. Sandwiched between the bathroom and the kitchen is my closet with a mirror on the outside that's actually a really great size for a tiny home. I appreciate that. I really love having a closet where I can hang my dresses and sweaters and things like that. 90 square feet in here. Having a closet this size in a home that small feels so luxurious. I love it. <laughs> And at the back of the house, we have the seating area. Y'all, I love this space. It is multifunctional. This is my lounge area where I can hang out and relax, read a book, whatever. And of course it is dining. Love it. And it's also a workspace. I am a photographer and videographer. I make these videos on YouTube as well as doing professional portrait photo shoots. So I need a space where I can edit and work on my laptop. This is perfect for that. I'm also an artist. So I convert this area into an artist painting studio as well. And that's not all. This also transforms into a queen-sized bed. So I have not one, but two sleeping areas. To set up the bed, I simply take off the tabletop, remove these posts, the top of the table becomes a platform, rearrange the cushions, and voila! Queen-sized bed. is so spacious especially compared to the other one it's really nice to have that option and to have the option have guests over comfortably <sighs> mm. if this were my only option for a bed i'm not sure i'd love that because i don't really like the idea of having to make the bed set up the bed every night but i really love this as an option i just want a really big loungy space for a day this is awesome mm. Multi-use, multi-function space for the win. Mm. Underneath the table is what I like to call Peluche's Nook. He's got his bed and his baskets of toys and things, and he really loves it. It's like a cozy little cave for him. Yes, even in a very small house, there's still dedicated space for my pup. He's very important to me, he's family, and he has to have his own space too. Underneath the benches is more storage. Some of that storage can be accessed from these doors, but I can lift the cushions up, remove a piece of wood, and see them from the top down too, which is really helpful sometimes. Above the lounge area is four more cabinets. In these two, I have clothes, shirts, pants, and in these two, I have art supplies. And on the roof up here, I have another vent. These roof vents are awesome because they let in a really beautiful breeze. So I love to keep that open and feel the breeze when I'm hanging out in the lounge. 
I have a lot of windows in here, which I really love because they let in so much light. It makes the space feel like really open and bright and airy. I also really love that all of these windows open and have a screen, so they let in the breeze, but not the bugs. Really helpful to have each window open on either side of the RV because the breeze blows through and creates amazing ventilation in here. Of course, there's so much light in here during the day because of all the windows but what do I do about light at night? I have five strands of battery operated twinkle lights which give me the perfect ambient mood lighting at nighttime. Three of those strands work on remote. It's a little hard to see right now. I'm gonna have to show you later. lifestyle really requires you to be living intentionally. I have to constantly provide things like water and electricity for myself that most people in regular houses take for granted. I definitely don't take those things for granted anymore. I very much appreciate having running water and electricity on demand. So how do I have electricity? I have one house battery that charges via my engine when I drive and that runs my water pump and a couple of my lights. The rest of my electrical needs are all sourced through a solar generator. I have an EcoFlow portable power station and portable solar panel that I can set up anywhere. And this allows me to charge my laptop, my phone, my camera batteries, my portable fans, anything else I need. I do have climate control options for my tiny house. If I'm connected to a power supply, I have an air conditioner, I have a heater that runs off of propane, and I have three small portable and rechargeable fans that I can put anywhere in the house to give me some more airflow. Now that's the life. <sighs> All of this keeps me either cool or warm depending on the environment. Another thing I love about this dolphin is the outside storage as well. In here, I have my hose for emptying my gray and black tanks. I have a water hose, um, a shovel, things like that. They each have a lock on them, which is great, so no one can steal your stuff. Inside this compartment, I have a medium-sized propane tank, which fuels my fridge and my heater. I love that the propane is stored in a compartment that can be accessed from the outside, and it's in a vented compartment too, which is amazing and safe. Inside the compartment next to the propane is my house battery that fuels my water pump and a few lights. In this compartment is my electrical cord so I can plug into a regular household outlet or an RV outlet and I have on-grid power that way. This is really nice to have on hand but most of the time I use off-grid power solar power. And of course I have lots of artwork and decor items in here that just make my tiny home feel more personal and homey to me. I really love plants but taking care of living plants on the road can be really tricky and you cannot cross borders with plants and I go to Canada and Mexico sometimes so I have a couple fake plants in here that I really love you know they bring an element of nature inside even though they're plastic <laughs> I still really love them and they do remind me of actual living plants it's important to make your home feel like your home and I feel like I've done that with my space thank you for visiting my home I hope you enjoyed the tour if you're interested in knowing what it's like living on the road full-time then subscribe I put out a video every Sunday documenting my wild and unusual life and I'd love to have you along I'll see you next Sunday I mean this is kind of like a dirty hippie lifestyle right y'all don't worry I take my cleanliness and hygiene 
very seriously. I mean... It's always the last key I try. Okay, I've tried every key. What one is this? Try them all again. Alright, it's not a big key. Maybe it's this key? Yeah. I also really love that the windows all open and have screens to let in a beautiful breeze. Oh, this is fucking close. Come on, open. What the? Okay. As you can see, I've got some cookies in there. Um, candles my tarot cards, stuff like that. These videos are made possible through the support of our patrons. Join the Ride and Seek crew on Patreon today. Thank you, crew!